When you place an order for a FarmBot monitor, you'll receive it via Australia Post. Depending on where you live, you may also get it uh, from a courier, but typically because they weigh only five kilos and they come in a fairly compact box, as you can see, uh, Australia Post generally covers most of our deliveries in Australia. Uh, once you've got it, information about the unit that you've received is contained on these stickers on the outside of the box. This is your serial number. Cellular is usually referenced with a G and a dash and a four digit number following. And a satellite uh, monitor will have a zero and a dash and an eight or nine digit number following the zero and a dash. This sticker here just details what's inside the box. So here you can see cellular water. Everything contained in the box is laid out here on the table. Uh, what was contained in these two boxes um, is these two legs. The legs themselves have um, screws already attached to them. So if you're wondering where they are, they're part of the leg. We provide an Allen key so that you can fasten it. Um, the two types of screws are just an option. If you want to use Phillips head, you can. If you want to use a tech screw, um, that's also fine. But obviously, if you've got a tech screw or you want to use the tech screw, 5 16th tech bit will be needed, along with obviously an electric drill and a 30 mil hole saw. Uh, the hole saw itself is arguably the most technical aspect of the installation. Make sure you have one before you get out to where the tank is. Um, the only requirement is obviously there's, there's multiple types of hole saws, but just make sure it is 30 mils because the diameter of the hydrostatic probe you're inserting is 28 mils. And um, as you can see, that's protected with some foam. Leave the foam on until the very last minute, just before you insert it into the tank. Um, and the probe comes standard with six meters of cable, which um, I'll show you how to fasten that to the unit in just a moment. Okay, so let's fasten the legs. In order to do that, turn it upside down. Place it gently, I mean they are robust but they won't bounce around in the back of a ute and still operate perfectly well. Um, as I've mentioned the screws are already in them, just lean that against the farm bot and with the allen key just screw it in. It takes all of a few seconds making sure to get an angle right where you think the farm bot will sit nicely and still um, get maximum sunlight. That's probably 45 degrees, but we can confirm in just a moment. So once you've got both of these legs on, um, you want to just check where you think it will sit once it's on the tank. So it'll be sitting like so, and ideally, being a solar powered unit, you want to maximise the amount of sunlight it gets. And um, to some extent, that will depend on the angle of the lid on your tank. So, look, I think for now that's probably about right, um, but if we need to adjust it so that it sits a bit, uh, a bit further up, we can do that easily enough. Right, now to install your water level probe. Flip the unit over. You'll see the port for the probe is directly opposite the on and off switch. Make sure that your on-off switch is in the off position. It needs to be off when um, connecting the hydrostatic probe. But uh, the port for the water level sensor is protected by a cap. You can remove this cap and chances are you won't need to use this cap again. Um, just prior to attaching these, I'll also point out these other five ports because the farm body is developed to take multiple sensors. It can transmit data for up to 20 different sensors. Now obviously only five of them, five of the additional sensors can be um, hardwired into the unit and that's what these are for. So you could have rain gauge, flow monitoring, pressure monitoring and uh, port number five though has been developed for two-way communications for products that we currently have under development like uh, camera and pump control. Now we expect to release those this year. But what I mean by that, and the reason I mention it here, is that your rain gauge, your flow and your pressure monitoring cannot be done through port number five. So please bear that in mind. Now to connect the water level probe, definitely pay attention to the instructions that we include on all of our cables. Um, it's a three step uh, instruction which basically shows you how to achieve a firm connection between 
this unit, this, this uh, cable, I beg your pardon, and the farm bot unit. So marry up the male and female parts until it sits in comfortably. Then very firmly press down, give it a slight wiggle. Um, and the last point of connection will be this ring at the bottom, which you need to turn clockwise. But if it's done correctly, you will both feel and hear a click when the connection is made, like so. Once you hear that click and you've, you know you've inserted it firmly, um, your water level probe is more than likely to operate as it needs to. And um, I'd probably just mention that it has the titanium probe here with a ceramic diaphragm. And being the most sensitive part of the unit, leave the uh, packaging on it until you put it in your tank. And leave the unit in the off position until you get to the tank and it's time to switch it on and um, start using it. But probably wait until you put the probe in the tank until you do that. So we've already attached the cable and probe to the bottom of the farm bot. Now it's time to fasten it to the tank. A few tips to keep in mind. Uh, a galve tank, we've got some uh, tech screws, 5 16 thick bit. Uh, we will need the 30 mm hole saw, as I've mentioned, but the tips in particular to keep in mind are um, try and avoid any overlap of galve. Um, you don't want to be drilling through two, two sheets of galve if you can avoid it. And keep your outlets more than a metre and a half or so from where you're going to be placing the probe on the bottom of the tank. So here we are. Um, we are on the western side of a tank, which is why it's facing north and it's sideways to the edge of the tank, um, but our outflows are on the other side of the tank. So we know that it's not going to be in jeopardy of um, being sucked down one of the outflows. The next point is just drill a hole immediately below where your cable is plugged into the farm bot so that it will just naturally drop into that hole. And then it's really just a question of fastening four screws to, um, to the legs, so two on each side. So we've got our hole, now it's time to take the protective sleeve off the, the uh, titanium hydrostatic probe and it just fits in the tank like so. We just feed all six metres of cable in. Okay, once the legs are fastened on with four tech screws or whatever screw you're using to connect it to whichever type of tank, the only thing that remains is to switch the on-off switch on so that um, it will begin transmitting. So the lever for the on-off switch needs to be in the forward position towards the solar panel. And then once that's on, um, you will probably receive a text message and an email to uh, the addresses that you've supplied, uh, welcoming you to FarmBot and providing you with links to your dashboard, which uh, clearly will then enable you to monitor your water levels remotely. And aside from that, look, it, it's, it's a fairly low maintenance system. Occasionally you might need to wipe the solar panel, but really there's not much more to do except, um, you know, keep, keep 